okay welcome students uh, today uh, we will deal with uh, another important class of form that is called uh, cryogenic form the very name and this is the last form that uh, we have to study okay so let's see what is uh, cryogenic first this means the cryogenics so it is uh, composed of two terms one is cryo and the one is genics uh, they are greek word basically cryo means uh, generating low temperature and genics means uh, generating producing so uh, literally it is uh, uh, producing a low temperature okay that's the meaning of uh, cryogenics okay our we can define formally as uh, it is a production of very low temperatures and the study of behavior of materials at these very low temperatures so it involves both uh, generation of low temperature and even it include uh, maintenance of low temperature and it also involve uh, measurement of low temperature so this are all technologies mm -hmm. so they are all coming under cryogenics measurement is important this also another technology you cannot use a ordinary a thermometer to measure kelvin temperature because we, if this temperature uh, goes to absolute zero level okay minus 273 degrees celsius so uh, this is a very advanced uh, modern uh, science uh, we can say one of the branch of physics like that and uh, technically we can say cryogenic is that branch of physics uh, which deals with the uh, temperatures ranging from Minus from 50 degrees Celsius to minus 273 degrees. This is the technical uh, definition of uh, all temperature falling under these range. You can classify as cryogenic temperatures. Okay. So there are many reasons for calling it that we will deal with uh, very soon. Okay. Why? Why do we take minus from 50 as the ceiling? Okay. Uh, the borderline. Okay. So all temperature below 150 we classify as Cryogenic. So there are uh, scientific reasons for that, and you can even call, uh, a, you can rewrite your definition as all uh, temperature ranging from zero Kelvin to 123 Kelvin are also called uh, cryogenic temperature. This is the uh, definition given by uh, Encyclopedia Britannica. Okay, or any any cryogenic uh, textbook if you go through, you will get this definition. Okay. Zero Kelvin to one twenty three Kelvin. That is the range. Okay, all temperatures falling under this range we can call cryogenic temperatures. And uh, what is the reason for calling them is this is the reason. Okay, uh, almost all permanent gases. You know what is a permanent gas? Uh, you know what is an ideal gas? Okay. So, uh, so gases like helium, hydrogen, neon, nitrogen, oxygen. All of the temperature, okay, so means the boiling point is below minus one degree Celsius. Okay, so uh, it starts from actually oxygen. Oxygen is uh, around to minus one degree, degree Celsius. Okay, so uh, that is a criteria because you can now tell the reason uh, like this because uh, why minus one fifty is Taken as a cryogenic temperature, the reason is that all permanent gases get liquefied below minus 150 degrees Celsius. All gases get liquefied. Permanent gases. That is the reason for taking minus 150 as the cryogenic temperature starting point. Okay, you can say starting point. So below there are so many temperatures up to uh, minus 273 degrees Celsius. Okay. So. And uh, uh, some typical permanent gases are shown here: oxygen, nitrogen, hydrogen, like that. And their boiling points are shown here in both in degree Celsius and Kelvin. Uh, you must note that always when you write Kelvin, there is no degree noted. Whereas when you write using Celsius, it is uh, degree Celsius. So standard formalism. So that must be kept in mind, and you can see that all these temperatures falls below minus one degree. 
so that is the justification for the value minus quantity degree Celsius. Okay. And uh, you may be knowing um, uh, in, when you come to uh, cryogenic pumps, the history of pumps also uh, began with uh, uh, liquefaction of gases. Okay. People find found an interesting, very interesting application for liquefied gases. You can liquefy oxygen, you can liquefy nitrogen, hydrogen, oxygen. For example, you find a, a, a application in welding industry. Okay. Uh, nitrogen you find in very important uh, applications in, uh, in fertilizer manufacture or many chemical industries they need nitrogen. Even in pumping and uh, gas nowadays, nowadays uh, tire inflation, tire inflation then using nitrogen gas. Okay. In modern cars they use nitrogen for filling. And hydrogen of course you have so many applications in cryogenic rockets and like that. So the pioneering uh, work was done by James Dewar, a okay, Dutch physicist, and uh, later on he liquefied uh, hydrogen in 1898. Then of course the uh, liquefaction of helium okay, that took place in the year 1908 by Kamerling Ons. Okay, he's also a uh, Dutch physicist. Okay, you know, he's known as Kamerling Ons is known as the father of uh, cryogenics. And uh, so, uh, in line with uh, the direction of gases, uh, uh, the same technique uh, people started to use for doing cryogenic pumping. You can cool down gases, uh, then what happens? These uh, gas get uh, either solidized or condensed. This way, you can remove uh, from a chamber. That is a basic physics, okay? You cool down, cool down, then gases will condense. They may form either solids or they may form either. Uh, liquid form and this way you can sweep away from the chamber. So chamber is clean and you can go on with your experiments. So that that's a, a real spirit of uh, using cryogenic technology. And uh, it got a sudden boost, a sudden revolutionary events took place in cryogenic pumping with uh, space exploration. Okay, Spain, we know they need for a lot of vacuum chambers for doing so many trainings, okay, or simulation process, they need vacuum chambers. So, where they found a cryogenic pump will be more useful than other pumps for creating uh, sufficient vacuum in certain areas for simulation applications. Okay. That was uh, the story of a vacuum pump. Okay. And uh, uh, cryogenic pump is a vacuum pump which uh, captures, okay, as I told you. It holds the gas in the form of liquid or solid. Uh, so what we do here, you, you have certain surfaces, certain plates will be there that will be cooled to very low temperatures of the order of uh, 120 Kelvin. The, the, this 120 is only a starting temperature. Then we will go further down. Okay. Uh, we will uh, come across it in the later uh, slides. So we can call, we can classify them as a capture type of form because here gases are being captured or hauled on a surface by reducing temperature so they come under the class of capture type of pumps okay. and uh, uh, what is happening is at low temperature when certain surfaces are made in low temperature gases uh, come and collide with the surface the impinges okay. when the impinges the energy is suddenly uh, taken by the cryo surface it's called a surface once the energy is taken away from a gas molecule, uh, what happens, their vibration and uh, colliding frequency uh, get reduced, uh, ultimately they get deposed on the surface. This is what is happening, their kinetic energy is lost, so they get uh, uh, freezed, uh, freezed and they stop on the surface. So this will go on for, uh, for a while, for a period of time, then all the gases do like this, they come to the surfaces, through the surfaces where they leave the, the energy and they get dumped. So this way you can remove all gases from a uh, given uh, volume, from a given chamber. Okay, this is how it looks like, it's a cross-sectional diagram of a cryogenic pump. You can see certain surfaces here, they are actually uh, steel plates and metallic plates called cryopanels. Okay. One set of cryopanels you can see here, 
a, another set of frame panel you can see here okay so there are different set and they work in different stages just like in a diffusion pump there are different stages of working of a, a cryogenic pump and uh, this is a tube actually a metallic tube through which uh, you will bring cryogens or liquefied uh, such gases so they they are circulated and you can take it out uh, to a chamber or a compressor will be there a pumping chamber will be there so the pump uh, liquefied cryogens like liquid nitrogen liquid nitrogen liquid helium etc are brought and uh, they are circulated so when they are circulated what happens these cryo panels get cooled down and down and down so starting from a temperature of 120 kelvin to say around uh, around 4 kelvin okay up to uh, the cooling down okay up to that temperature it goes down as a result step by step different gases are getting uh, okay uh, deposited on the surface uh, so this is a cryo panel so you can see a visual impact in it okay? how uh, this is where okay this is where the vacuum chamber is connected gas is coming into this uh, cryo pump from the chamber and they collide with the cryo panels okay you can see the fluid coming okay so fluid is uh, circulating all around it and uh, this panel will get uh, cooled down to around 100 kelvin under kelvin so uh, usually vapor water vapor oil vapor etc they get condensed over this cryo panels okay this is a magnified photo of the same picture Uh, so through the central tube actually cryogens are coming cryogens are flowing and cooling continuously okay it's a continuous process and uh, water oil molecule get condensed but not the other things so uh, you can see cryo pumps can pump all gases okay not uh, water vapor oil or even noble gases uh, at temperature of under kelvin at the starting temperature is around under kelvin to be sufficient to condense water and other hydrocarbons like oil vapors and you have other components okay air component which contain nitrogen oxygen okay other uh, other rare gases noble gases you have helium you have helium uh, hydrogen so we have to condense each one of them specifically okay at 4 kelvin you can see uh, hydrogen isotopes uh, get uh, condensed or liquefied and neon also get liquefied so uh, and ultimately at the final stage only helium get removed by a process called cryosorption and uh, how they are getting attached to the cryo surfaces they are getting attached to the attached to the cryo surface by water wall fluid okay the no chemical force are involved they are sticking with water wall fluid so what is the advantage once uh, you want to remove all these gases you just increase the temperature inside the chamber when you increase the temperature inside the chamber automatically each and every gas or vapors condensed on the surface get sublimated or get evaporated uh, at different stages okay so this can uh, you can remove all the gases uh, this is uh, how it uh, looks like from outside okay this is the uh, cryo panels these are fitted inside and you can see holes here to this holes you can fit in a turn bolt and connect to the vacuum chamber and this is the tube through which uh, your cryogens okay cryogenic liquids are flowing into this okay this is an insulating material made up of some high high quality ceramics okay so heat conduction will be the lowest and only the one part is shown here they have the pumping section is here compressor will be here so compressor is helping to circulate cryogens through these panels okay So there is the input and output okay so uh, and ultimately three type of physical processes are involved in a cryogenic pump uh, they can be uh, named as one is cryo condensation uh, another is cryo trapping and the third one is called uh, cryo sorption okay. three uh, steps are there cryo condensation cryo trapping and cryo sorption in cryo condensation the temperature required is hardly 100 kelvin kelvin where what happens water vapor and hydrocarbons say oil vapor because we are using a for pump like a diffusion pump or a rotary pump so hydrocarbon oils uh, molecule may be there they get deposited at this temperature okay so that is called cryo condensation simple cryo condensation 
simple condensation at happening at very low temperature very low temperature and next is uh, what is called cryotrapy this usually happens at 20 kelvin uh, where you can condense or you can remove air nitrogen oxygen like this, molecules okay so how this is what is the difference here what is happening is at the cryotrapping uh, stage it is a gas molecule especially water molecule they start depositing on the surface at a very high speed very high speed so they are uh, coming to the surfaces at high speed so a process called entrainment happens in entrainment these water molecule drag the neighboring molecules like oxygen nitrogen air etc and as a result uh, these molecules which are not going to be condensed which one uh, air nitrogen oxygen etc are not going to be condensed at uh, 100 kelvin they get dragged and they get deposed on surface forcefully so this is uh, a kind of forceful deposition of a uh, molecule on the surface not actually uh, getting condensed okay so they get trapped within the water crystal because crystallization happens because we are some lowering temperature to very low value remember water can crystallize at a zero degree kelvin sorry zero degree celsius and here it is uh, getting condensed at minus 200 around uh, that uh, minus 200 degree celsius so it will be heavy solid in a highly crystalline state so they have the affinity or ability to trap certain other gas molecule in its crystal lattice so what is happening is these gas molecules are getting embedded or trapped in the crystal lattice of water okay so this is what is called entrainment is a forceful dragging of uh, gas molecules from the chamber so this way get the uh, deposit on the surface cryopanics okay and finally you have a cryosorption many gas molecules are still there like neon helium etc helium isotope like hc3 hc4 helium can exist in two isotopes they are also dragged uh, they are not dragging here there is a uh, surfaces inside we will show you uh, very soon uh, they are at a very low temperature of the order of 4 kelvin usually activated charcoal or zeolite materials are used to form cryosorbing surfaces inside so they have a high heavenity to attach or uh, catch or hold helium like molecules okay so final at the final stage that is the 4 kelvin by cryosorption method all the gas molecule like helium and uh, uh, remaining hydrogen molecules okay already some of the hydrogen molecule got uh, uh, attached or got deposited by entrainment process the remaining hydrogen molecules are also deposited in the cryosorption uh, stage okay so this is how a uh, schematic look of a cryogenic pump you can see so many panels this is a 100 degree panel this is a uh, uh, 20 degree panel and uh, inside you can see 4 kelvin panel okay so a step by step process happens in that at the 4 kelvin temperature what happens uh, water vapor get deposited and there from crystals on this panel even on this surface also some of the water vapor form crystals okay when you lower the temperature 20 kelvin so you have to use different liquids for that okay different liquids are coming from here you may be using helium may be using nitrogen you may be using oxygen like that uh, at appropriate stage appropriate liquids are used so after 100 degree kelvin what happens the temperature is brought to 20 kelvin at that temperature argon oxygen nitrogen like gas are deposited by the process of cryotrapping that is what i call you cryotrapping rapid uh, deposition of water molecule and combined by uh, entrainment of argon oxygen nitrogen like molecules okay so they also get removed now the remaining is helium neon and the balanced uh, hydrogen molecule they are getting removed by the process for cryosorption here inside the interior walls are coated with activated charcoal or zeolites uh, high quality zeolites when temperature comes to 4 kelvin they are also removed this way what happens the entire chamber which is which are connected at the top side will be completely evaporated okay so that process uh, uh, described here uh, in three step process uh, first cylindrical metasurfaces first stage kept at temperature 100 kelvin 
uh, then it brought, gradually brought to 50 Kelvin where a deposition happens. In the second stage, metallic surfaces here kept at 15 Kelvin to 10 Kelvin, okay, second stage. Oxygen, nitrogen, organ-like gases are deposited by entrainment process, okay, by dragging, okay. And in the third section, third stage, you can see uh, temperature mainly that to 4 Kelvin. A charcoal is uh, deposited or uh, maintained here on the steel surfaces. They catch all the remaining molecules. Okay. So this is the three-stage pumping process happening in a cryogenic pump. And this can be used to generate pressures which are ranging from 10 raised to minus 3 tor to 10 raised to minus 11 tor. Uh, what is the basic physical mechanism? This is happening. Random thermal molecular motion bring them near to the thermal surfaces whereby they get condensed and adsorbed. Okay. So, it's a, it's a sort of adsorption, physical adsorption where water walls flows are involved. And uh, this is usually happening in a molecular form region. So, you know, this is an advanced, sophisticated type of pump. Uh, wherever you want to work with cryogenic pump, prior to that, uh, prior to that, you have to operate a rotary pump. You bring a minimum back home, say 10 raise to minus 3 tor. Then only you can switch over or switch on a uh, cryogenic type of pump. Okay, so it's very important. So, you can see some minor details here, uh, how different liquids, cryogens are brought to the cryo panels, different tubes you can see, through different tubes, uh, different liquids like liquid nitrogen, liquid helium, liquid, uh, even hydrogen, liquid oxygen, etc. are brought. Uh, that depends on the type of machine you are using. There may be variations in different textbooks, but uh, typically different gas are used to maintain different temperatures at a different thermal panels. Okay, well, same liquid you cannot use to maintain uh, temperatures on different panels. Okay. So, uh, you need to draw only the previous figure. Okay, this figure is not uh, required, but still for deeper knowledge, I uh, just uh, shown here. Uh, this is cryo panels. Again, you can see the visual impact of cryo panels, different levels of, uh, so one section here, stage one, stage two, and in, in the interior side, you can see cryos option material packed, okay, uh, activated carbon or CO lights kept here. So, at the different stages, pumping happens. As a, uh, different models and different varieties, okay, designs are available for cryogenic pumps. And uh, uh, as you know, uh, this is the most advanced level of pump. And in uh, modern experiments, uh, high level, high end applications, cryogenic pumps are used, not other pumps. They offer you very unique performance and absolute cleanliness and oil-free conditions are uh, provided by these kind of pumps. And their pumping speed is very high, tremendously high pumping speed. And uh, you can easily pump out uh, lighter gases. In rotary pumps and diffusion pump, uh, for pumping lighter gases are not easy. Hydrogen, helium, etc. are not easy. But here it is very easy. So we find this application in uh, such areas where helium and hydrogen is a obstacle. So and um, in fact, if in this there is no electrical and machine service. Okay, you can see only fluids are flowing, no mechanical parts are there. So spark-like things are not there. So spark is a big problem in many delicate experiments. So uh, there is no electric motor running here. So you can say no mechanical moving parts are present uh, in the vacuum chamber, hence uh, vibration free. So system remain very stable because nothing is rotating here. So simple fluids are coming and they are doing all the deposition, cooling process and deposition. So vibration free mechanism is provided. And uh, uh, this uh, cryogenic pump is of uh, largest number of applications. Okay? In almost all research and development establishment, even in DRDO of India, in NASA for example, or in CERN, uh, okay, you may know in CERN, Consortium for Nuclear Research, European Nuclear Research. Uh, in such establishments, uh, they are using cryogenic pumps for their all pumping needs. In addition to rotary pump, of course, that is for a roughing pump and the say space formation. At the outset, I told you about uh, uh, space missions, uh, where this is very uh, essential. Plasma physics application, thermonuclear fusion reaction, 
and the particle beam and the accelerator system is okay. You may be knowing about a large hadron collider established in Switzerland. Okay, so this is also of CERN. Okay, so there are also huge number of uh, uh, cryogenic uh, uh, vacuum pumps are operating to maintain very low vacuum for the large particle ha hadron colliders. Okay, so and in another application area is semiconductor industries for ICs and microprocessor fabrication. Okay, you may be knowing about in, uh, Intel Corporation or NDM. Such uh, large uh, IC fab fabricators, uh, they are also using cryogenic pump for making very low vacuum, where their thin film fabrication, okay, thin film deposition are done, such were very contaminant free atmosphere required, where they are using uh, cryogenic pump for um, their pumping needs. Okay. This is another look of cryogenic pump. And uh, these are some of the questions uh, which you have to answer in the assignment section. What are the various uh, physical processes involved in a cryogenic pumping? I told you about uh, processes like uh, cryo uh, condensation, okay, cryo um, trapping, and uh, cryosorption. You uh, search in the internet and find out. Uh, the details of cryosorption, cryo condensation, and cryo trapping. Okay, so that you may not get in textbook. You search it out and uh, make a brief report okay. about uh, these three different processes. Even though I explain in the slides, you just search it out, find out what detail mechanism of cryosorption, cryo condensation, and uh, uh, cryo trapping. It is very important in uh, for examination point of view. And uh, you can also briefly explain the working principle of cryogenic pump. I have given you the drawing, but you don't draw the drawing in your assignment. Simple, uh, briefly, a uh, uh, five line explanation is enough. Try to make it. But uh, uh, this question may uh, likely to ask in an essay form also. So be prepared for that. So, hope you have enjoyed this session. And this is our last pump as per our syllabus. Uh, next class onwards, we will start from. Uh, pressure measuring devices we call it vacuum pages okay so till that time oh, oh. okay thank you all of you